<laughs> Brendan, we got a couple of good buggers who are on straight after you, back to back, including the Warrior Holic and a new friend, Alexander, who was with his mates at Townsville. So we'll touch on the anointed future champions, and then I've got a whole lot of other questions for you. But, mate, <laughs> and Warriors fans, you don't get to shout from the rooftops that often. That was goddamn impressive, mate. That was the best performance overall that I've seen from the Warriors, probably since we made the we made the, the finals last time, 2019, 2018, whenever that was. That was a really good performance. And as much as I've been saying over the past couple of months, or ever since we beat the, the Tigers in preseason, sort of playing it down, temper expectations, this is one that you've just got to shout from the rooftops because this is a great Cowboys side. They went deep last year. They were a, a forward pass away from making the grand final. It's up in Townsville. It was 30-something degrees. Humidity was through the roof, tough conditions, went behind early, came back, didn't concede a try for the last 67 minutes. Didn't concede a point for the last 67-something minutes. Um, yeah, as much as I've been trying to temper expectations, this is one that for the next week, just sit back, enjoy, lap it up, and, and get carried away. Book your grand final go on, tickets. Go on, go on. Your hotel. Do it, live it up, because, yeah, man, it's, it's been a tough couple of years for Warriors fans not just on the field, off the field as well, as well. COVID restrictions, playing away from home, all that. So um, enjoy the little wins, but this isn't a little one. This is a big one. So just absolutely live it up. Well, I've got a whole lot of questions for you, and I'm going to ask the one last right at the top. But these include only two of last year's top eight and the, and the eight right now. What does it mean? Is this the beginning of the end for the Storm after years have been so consistent and excellent? Are the Dolphins for real? Three and three, how can they not be? I'll ask the same question about Brisbane. Can Parramatta come back from 0 and 3? And was that Roosters win enough to convince you that they are legit? Uh, beating the bunnies like that. But last on my question list was, is that a one-off best in two years performance from the Warriors or is it a sign of things to come? I think the, we saw the building blocks of things to come. Whether that's, what that actually means for this season, whether it's just climbing up the table, whether they can scrape into the eight, I'm not so sure. But defensively, there was just great organisation. There was grit and mongrel uh, for 80 minutes, you know, they, and Mitch Barnett goes off, Wade Egan goes off. Wade Egan was fantastic before he went off. And there was, we were, they were able to move, to, to, to adjust on the fly. Um, and, and there was just pride in the jersey and in the performance. Jazz Tavanga, when he scored, um, just just absolutely getting into it. Um, so I actually think there, there are other building blocks. And I, said, I was saying this before as well. For the last 10 years, it feels like Sean Johnson's teammates have just sort of said, here's the ball, do something magical, like you did in the first sort of three years of your career. And it just doesn't work like that. And it, But this, this season, and, and for the one season he was good at Cronulla, he played in the system, he played with more structure, where he was able to play like a traditional halfback to pass the ball. You know, he's, he's a really good playmaker when he's given those systems and structures and organisation. But if it's on to run, he can still run. Like he ran a couple of times on the weekend. He he ran against the Roosters and set up that try. Um, so when the option's on, he can still do it. He can sort of wind back the clock and and uh, and and run the ball. But I just think there's so many more options. So yeah, long story short, there's the building blocks for long-term success. I think perhaps as the season goes on, depth could be an issue. Um, they're able to cover a few spots you know, for 50 minutes, for 20 minutes on the weekend. But as the season goes on, I'm not sure how that depth will go. But certainly positive signs at that Andrew Webster has, has had a really good uh, couple of months with the guys. Brendan Bradford, coachsports.com.au out of Oz for us. We're talking NRL here on the platform. Also, rapid fire questions. Here we go. Are the Dolphins for real three and three? How can they not be? Add Brisbane to that as well. When you're both three and three, how can you not be? Yeah, Broncos, absolutely for real. Um, that they're, they're just they're just a good side. Well, you know, good quality players. Um, they 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 should have made the finals last year. It was one of the most insane sort of drop offs. Uh, they lost them with something like seven of their last eight or something last year. Uh, but it, you know, everyone's fit. No one's suspended. Everyone's happy. Everyone's on the field. When that happens with the Broncos, they're all good. They're the real deal. The Dolphins. I mean, I can't, I can't sit here and say it at three and zero that they're not the real deal. 
but in a similar sort of vein to the Warriors, I just wonder how when you get to you know mid June and there's it's a long season and there's injuries and there's suspensions and things like this. I just wonder how their depth will go. Certainly not writing them off, but um, it's a it's a long season. So um, an asterisk on with the Dolphins. Come back in a couple of months time and we'll see. Parramatta 0-3, they now face the Panthers of all opponents on Thursday night. And I know the draw is not working in their favour. They seem to get every great team coming off a bye and everything else. But the, you know, also the table doesn't lie. You've lost three games. Where to from here? I mean, can they even now make the playoffs? Because they're going to have to go on a run of something like 10-1 and or 10-2 and to be able to, to do that. Top four out of the question. Where do you see their season going from here? I'm strangely not... I'm, I'm not down on the on the eels. Um, like you say, they've got the Panthers and the Roosters next two weeks, which which is tough. Um, but look, they were in all those games: four point loss to Manly, four points to the Sharks, and Golden Point to the Storm. Three really good teams could have gone either way. Zero and three, yes, terrible start to the season. I still think that they'll make the top eight. I still think they'll come back. Um, they're just too good a side not to. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm strangely not that concerned about the Eels. Um, they're, they're, they're not playing bad footy. They're, they can score tries. They've got points in them. Um, look, the fewest amount of players is 12 against the Storm, but they scored 26 and 30 in their last two games. Points are in them. Um, I, I think they'll, they'll come good. They'll start clicking. Um, yeah, it's, it's strange, again, to sit here, they're, they're winless in three games and say, I'm pretty comfortable that they'll make the top eight, but I just think they will. I think they're too good not to, to go on a run and, and to make the, the finals. Titans beating the Storm. Let's take nothing away from that Titans side. Geez, they did their best to throw that game away. But is this the beginning of the end of what we know as the Storm? After years of such consistent excellence, are we finally seeing that the fragmentation falling apart of this great franchise under Bellamy? They've got the Tigers next Friday night. I mean, what a way to resurrect your season if that's the case. Well, or am I reading way too much into this? No, I was sitting there watching this game um, on Saturday afternoon and thinking the same. Like, is this is this the empire crumbling, uh, or is it the start of it at least? And because the, you look back at the last, what are we talking, twenty four years of the Storm, and it's been built on hard nosed forwards. But yes, they've had some great players, like some of the best players of the last twenty years. But it's just been built on no nonsense, hard nosed, head down, bum up forward play. Uh, you know, you go back to your Lazaruses and, and Kearney back in the day, and then you, you come through, and, and the guys they've lost this heading into this year, the Bromwich brothers, Corfusi, um, you know, it, it's it's just they they've lost that edge, they've lost that that platform, and of course Munster, Pappenhausen, huge outs, they they seem a bit directionless um, in attack, but yeah, I just I just wonder, I, I'm not sure whether those results would have changed even if those two players were, were in the side because um, there's just there's lacking that, that grip, that resolve through the middle at, at Melbourne. And that's this is going to be a fascinating one to watch. And like you say, pardon me, they've got the Tigers this weekend and the Tigers have been truly abominable. They've been terrible. So you're looking to bank a couple of points there, but mate, you would have said that against the Titans and you would have said that against the Bulldogs as well. So... Certainly one of the great storylines of 2023. Brendan Bradford is with us. The Roosters, is that enough beating the Rabbits like that that says restores your confidence and that, yes, this side is one of the ones to fear right throughout the competition? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, they were pretty scratchy against the Warriors, obviously lost against the Dolphins round one. Um, but that was a that was a tough performance. This is a good rabbit side. And there are, the Roosters have a, a lot of players that come back in, Angus Crichton, um, one of their sort of veterans at this point, Sicily Tupanua, a really underrated forward, um, both come, both to come back. And I just think, yeah, there, there, there was the, the move to, to start uh, Smith and Jared Wadia Hargreaves on the bench. And when they came on, um, it just, the game changed. There, there was there was that mongrel. Uh, Smith, another one who's left the storm and, and, and sort of taken that grit with him. When he came on with, with JWH on the weekend, um, yeah, really, really just hard no no nonsense. It wasn't pretty. Um, it, it was these, you know, these Roosters, Rabbitohs derbies often are just pretty ugly and, and can get a bit sort of cynical and fiery. But 
uh, that's just what you got to do in, in these sort of classic rivalries like this. And the Roosters came away with it. And I think, uh, yeah, if you're a Roosters fan, it's 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 not polished, it's not slick, it's not quite clicking, but just that base, that resolve is there. I think there's, yeah, plenty plenty to go on for the Roosters. Finally then, and I love this, and I know that this is just stat numpty time and all of that kind of stuff, and it's only three rounds in, and some teams have only played two games. But I'm going to read you two lists here. 2022, the final table. Panthers, Sharks, Cowboys, Eels, Storm, Roosters, Rabbits, Raiders. Right now, Broncos, Dolphins, Seagulls, Warriors, Titans, Roosters, Bulldogs, Dragons. There's only one team at the moment in that top eight right now that was in the top eight last year. What can we read into this? Not too much. I don't think too much. I think I think we're, it's too early to, to make sort of these long-term predictions, but... On early trends, I think that I think the Broncos will be there, the Panthers will be there. I'd be surprised if the Roosters weren't. Um, oh, I haven't been I haven't been convinced with the Raiders, even though they got, they got a win yesterday. The Sharks again, not that convinced. I, I, I think look, uh, when I was trying to predict my top eight, it was harder to put teams into it than it was to take things out. I thought I thought there was a maybe four or five teams that you're like, all right, they'll be there. And it was a lottery for the for the sort of next sort of three or four positions in the top eight. And I, I haven't seen anything to change my mind on that. It's got to be a fantastic um, race because I think look, I'm already ruling the Tigers out. They were terrible. I was at Belmore watching them yesterday. They were awful. Apart from four minutes where they scored three tries and somehow got back in the game, I'm ruling the Tigers out. Everyone else, I reckon, is is possible. It, it, truly, I think on the day, maybe the Knights is a bit iffy with Caleb Hall not playing. Um, we'll see the depth of the root, of the Dolphins and the Warriors and if the Titans can maintain this. But I truly think it's it's a it's one of the really open, most open comps that we've seen in a number of years. Obviously, the Panthers are number one favourites for the Premiership. But you look down the top eight, I think it's going to be a really interesting season. The first three weeks have been upsets, but more than that, they've been. It's just been great, bloody great footy to watch. Um, and I, yeah, I think we're in for one of the most open and exciting seasons we've seen in a while. 